Good Tuesday evening. I'm meteorologist Lena Mariarango from Fox 26 in Houston, Texas. This is our daily tropical briefing where we kind of get a chance to go in depth with all the nitty gritty of everything that is happening both in the Atlantic and the Pacific, of course, with a little bit more of a focus on things that could potentially impact the Gulf Coast, given that we are in Fox 26 uh, in Houston, Texas. I'm going to start with an overall kind of picture here. Notice that most of the Atlantic is very quiet. A couple of reasons for that, but there is a plume of Saharan dust that is moving across the Atlantic right now and kind of suppressing tropical activity. Remember, things can still form. They just have a harder time doing so with all of that dust present. This is going to move into the South Caribbean. Looks to keep that area fairly quiet, but we do have this area that we are monitoring at this point. It does have low chances for development, but it's the closest to home, and therefore we are keeping a fairly close eye on this. However, the National Hurricane Center has actually dropped its probability of developing 10% over the next two days. That has not changed, but it was previously at 30% throughout the next five days where we were kind of looking at the end of the week time frame Thursday, Friday for the potential to this maybe to turn into something more than it is. Notice the area of low pressure that's being monitored is kind of hugging the coastline. If this stays out over open Gulf waters, it might have a little bit of a better chance to kind of turn into anything. If not, it's likely just going to say disorganized showers and storms, which if we take a look at the infrared satellite, that's pretty much what it is right now. Keeping in mind that again, the area of low pressure in this general vicinity and a lot of this convection is happening off to the west side right now. If we switch this to satellite and radar, you can kind of make out a little bit of a spin here, so to speak. But again, this is a weak low trough. It's a surface low uh, and it is going to say fairly stationary kind of in this area. So for now, it continues to be fairly disorganized, fairly broad. In general, though, the impacts do look to be the same, regardless of if this is able to become anything more than what it is right now or if it isn't. It does look to bring heavy rain to the coast of Louisiana all the way across to the Florida Panhandle. This could prompt some flooding in the days to come, so people in those areas should definitely remain aware and focus in on the forecast. I know here in Southeast Texas we were hoping to get in on a little bit of this rain action, but we are on the outer brim of it. It doesn't look to bring us all that much rain. We could get in on some of kind of the outer bands, the outer showers and storms, unless this meanders a little bit over the course of the next few days. But for right now, it is looking that it's going to be most likely where the majority of the rain is staying off to our east. You can see that the temperatures, sea surface temperatures on the buoys in that area have dropped. So certainly feeding energy and feeding heat and moisture from the Gulf of Mexico up into some of those uh, storms and convection. And notice closer to us, we've got more so middle 80s across the board surrounding that. Now, if this were to turn into anything, let's check in with our names list and see where we're at. We've had Alex, Bonnie, and Colin so far. That brings us to the D name on the list. I do think it's unlikely at this point that this gets named maybe a brief tropical depression. We're kind of looking at a similar scenario to what we saw with Invest 95 L where it never uh, formed or got named or and we'll see if this even gets investigated past what it is right now. Switching over to the Pacific. Here is a high resolution satellite imagery of Hurricane Darby, which is just a beautiful storm to look at from a distance. Of course, very compact, very well structured. You can see right through the uh, hurricane eye all the way down to the ocean waters, and this was earlier this afternoon kind of right around lunchtime. It does continue to move westward in open Pacific waters kind of with no threats to land at this time. It was able to intensify though from a tropical storm to a major hurricane in 24 hours. And if you look at a wider view, you can see, as I mentioned, a very compact but powerful storm still hanging on to a category three status at this time, but the winds have dropped some. They were sustained at 125 miles an hour this morning and they've dropped a little bit to 115. Nonetheless, it's crucial. 17 miles an hour at the west, so moving fairly quickly, and it does look like it will maintain at least hurricane status for another couple of days before it begins to dissipate kind of just off to the south of Hawaii. We also saw Bonnie kind of dissipate a little bit farther away. I mean, this is still a journey of a couple thousand miles, but some of the Hawaiian islands are dealing with drought scenarios and might be very lucky to get in on some remnant rainfall from that system, depending on how it kind of pans out from here over the course of the next few days and into the end of the week. There is one other area that is being monitored for the potential for development, also with a potential westward track once it does form, if it forms. It does have fairly low chances in the immediate future, so only a 10% chance over the next two days. This looks to be a more gradual development, but notice fairly high chances over the next five, about an 80% chance they're giving for this to turn into something more than just an area of disturbed weather. So taking a look at the Pacific name list, we've already crossed off the D, of course. I just showed you Darby. This would be a 
stell if it were to form. And again, something we will continue to monitor, though with a westward track, relatively low impacts to any kind of land masses. With that being said, though, I do want to urge and caution you. We're still very early in the season. Right now is not the time to let your guard down. Notice where we are right now. We're way down here, right? Kind of about halfway through July, so to speak. Things really don't peak for hurricane season in general. Uh, peak on September 10th, but we really tend to see more activity here in southeast Texas, kind of in the August and September time frame. Once we get into October, we start to see those strong cold fronts pushing through, and that keeps to, tends to keep uh, everything away from us. But now is your time to continue to review your safety plans, evacuation routes, make sure that your kits are ready to go. You have everything that you need so that if something were to develop, your plan is in place and you'll be ready to go. And of course, we'll be here to walk you through it. So if you're not already following me on social media, you can find me on all three platforms at Lena Arango Fox 26. And if you don't have that Fox 26 weather app, this is a great time to download it. Not only can you track weather locally on each and every single day, you can track weather anywhere in the US. You just have to activate it for your location. And it will, of course, give you tropical related watches and warnings, but it also is going to keep you informed on the day to day. Speaking of day to day, we'll be right back here. Same time, same place tomorrow, shortly after 4 p.m. Looking forward to having you check in with us then so we can give you the latest on everything that's happening in the tropics.